Welcome back. Finally, in this session, we're going to do the finishing operation. So we're going to create the finishing toolpath. And that's what you naturally do after every roughing operation is you do the finishing uh, operation. And that's going to go right over that toolpath that you created earlier. Now remember, to remove your toolpath, all you have to do is hold Alt and press on the T button. And it just didn't happen because I don't have my graphical area selected. So there you go. Pressing Alt T removes your toolpath if you like, or you can keep it there. So let's go ahead and create our uh, finishing toolpath. So we can either go up here to the toolpath and come over here to finish, or I can come over here to the third icon down and click on finish. And there we go. Now, I can sit there and select my path again, like we did before, or if I can come over here and click on the last button, it will select my last path that I have created. So that's what you naturally want to do when you create a roughing path toolpath the next thing you do is create the finishing toolpath and all you have to do is click on the last button and as you can see it's selected in white it's highlighted in white you can zoom in a little bit so I can show it to you and as you can see the stock is a little bit over the white line which means the finishing operation still needs to be done so let's go ahead and click on the check mark and the menu pops up for the dialog box for the lathe finish pro properties so now we've done the roughing. Now we want to do the finishing toolpath. Let's go ahead and choose a finishing tool. So come down here until you see the finishing tool. So we're going to choose the OD finish right at 35 degrees. Let's go ahead and choose that. You're only going to use the left when you're using a right spindle. So we're going to use the right because we chose a left spindle. You don't want to have any interferences there. Now let's go to comment and you can call this finish operation. So when you generate your NC code, you will be able to tell that this operation is done for finishing. Let's go ahead and go to finish par parameters, and let's keep everything here the same. We're going to keep uh, the finishing step over at point 0.1. The number of finishing passes, we're only going to do one finishing pass. We're going to do stock to leave at a while 0, and stock to leave in z-axis at 0. We want to keep them the same. We're going to keep everything here the same, but we're going to come over here to corner break, and we're going to check it. And we're going to click on corner break to show you that dialog box for the corner break. Now the corner break is going to break your corner a little bit. Now we want to leave everything in radius corners. So it's going to leave a radius around your corner so it doesn't leave any sharp corners. And we're going to leave the same settings here. Maximum angle 135, minimum angle 45, and radius at 5 thousandths. We're going to, there's chamfer. The chamfer is for this option right here. And then the, the radius is for the top option. So we're going to keep it at radius and click on the check mark. Now, let's go to lead in, lead out. And for the lead in, lead out, we want to come over here to the right and select tangent. We want the part, the tool to come tangent to the part leading into the part. But we do not want to do this. Now, if you click on tangent, I mean, I mean we do want to do this for the lead in, lead out. But we do not want to do this for the lead out. So this is only for the lead in. The reason we don't want to do it for the lead out is because it overrides the degrees that the angle comes into. So you don't want the tool to come in. Uh, it, it can only come in tangent basically from the right to the left and come in up top. If you do if you do change it to none, then it will come from the top coming down 45 degrees towards your part. So we want to do tangent as it leads in. But for the lead out, we're going to do the same thing we did in a previous uh, uh uh, roughing job and we're going to change that to 0.25 roughing and we're going to keep it at none so it leads out at a 45 degree angle you don't want it just in case it doesn't hit anything and doesn't mess up anything so we will always want to leave it at none for the lead out and the lead in we put it as tangent let's go ahead and click on the check mark and go ahead and click on the ok button and it already machined it up for us but we didn't see it but let's go ahead and back plot it and verify it so we can see our operation so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to move my part a little bit to the left. And let's go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and select all operations. You can see the check mark in all these uh, operations. I'm going to click on the back plug button. And click on OK. Everything is OK after you click on back plot. Let's go ahead and click on the verify selected operation. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. And see if I, don't, I have everything all good. So it's going to go slow. I'm going to put in an isometric. Then it's going to start by doing a roughing. 
operation and you will see the tool change when it gets to the finishing operation. We can speed it up if we like by coming down here and just speeding up the arrow a little bit. So there we go. This is the different tool than the roughing tool. And as you can see, it passed one last time to do a finishing tool with the new tool. This is the finishing tool. This is not like your roughing tool. So there we go. Click on the check mark. And we're done with this uh, session. And we just learned how to do the finishing, set up a finishing operation for our first session.